once again welcome back to the channel okay guys so in this one from the trip I just came back from which was Deptford I had a breakdown okay so I was stuck on the side of the track and I couldn't determine why the car wouldn't start the dash lights were coming on flashing so it's definitely something to do with the alternator or some sort of wiring problem anyway I spent about an hour on the side of the track there trying to work it out checked all these fuses in that box there Also, in the driver's door, there's another one behind this kick panel, guys. Uh, I don't know if every 80 series got it, but this one does, and I've had problems in the past with it, so check that. Okay, there are these type of fuses here. 16 years I've had this vehicle, it's only been on the back of the truck twice, so I'm doing well with it. So like I said, I got it home on the back of a truck. Luckily for me, it wasn't too far, so it didn't cost a hell of a lot of money. So once I got it home, I found exactly what the problem was. Now there's two things, there's actually three things. In the meantime guys, these belts were they're pretty much like three months old. But you can see that they're cogged on the inside. And that's what makes the car whine like a cat. And I'm quite not very happy with that. I sourced out some cogless belts. And they're on the vehicle now. So we can start the vehicle, there's a bit of a method to do it. And it does start, but... It doesn't wind like a cat anymore. So in the meantime, guys, I sourced this brand new alternator. Now I was gonna buy a, a rebuild kit and rebuild the old one. But for this instance, I really honestly cannot be bothered. So we've got this a brand new one right here. So that's the first problem right there. The old one in the vehicle right now, I've cleaned it up. It's, uh, it's 14 years old. Last time I did that, I changed it out in the bush. So it's been through a lot of uh, hard work. Second issue guys, is this fusible link. And I, it wasn't broken like this. As you can see, the wires come off from there. Okay, it wasn't broken. But it was to the point where it wasn't making contact. And this is why the vehicle wouldn't start. So during the actual camping trip, on the way in, the dash light started to flash out. The vehicle was starting fine. I knew there was a problem. Then the flashing would go away. So thinking to myself, it's gonna go away, it's gonna be okay to get it home. On the way home, they started flashing again, but then came on constantly. And when they'd come on constantly, it had lost full contact into that fusible link. So the third thing that I'm gonna to replace today is this plug on the back of the alternator. Now the one on the back of the alternator at the moment is it's got exposed wires in there. So it took me a little bit to source this plug. There's quite a few of them online, they're quite cheap. This is a conversion to a Hilux, so this is the 80 series plug here. So I've got to cut that off, rejoin it, and then just put some heat shrink on it and make it all neat. So the plug is down there, it is on the back of the alternator as we speak. It is a bit awkward to get off. And doing this job, ladies and gents, I'm going to take a few things off the vehicle to actually get in there to get the alternator out. Luckily for me, I've got some air tools. Okay, tools for today, guys. Two fusible links, not one, so I can keep one as a spare in the glove box. We've got a 3.8 air ratchet there, a rattle gun to rip the tyre off, 14mm socket for the top bolt in the alternator, 10mm I think it is for the adjustment, it's either that or it's 12mm, and either either 12 or 10 for the bottom bolt on the alternator. Did buy a brand new socket the other day, ladies and gentlemen, and not this one. I meant to buy a 3.8 drive one and brought a quarter inch, so fortunately, that will be going back. It's in the car over there, so bit of a shame we're gonna use all these adapters. Okay, so when we do the plug on the soldering, we're gonna heat shrink it all up nice and neat. And I brought some of this stuff here just the other day. Uh, quite handy to keep in the car too. You can even use a lighter in the bush just to shrink it down over your wires. Get rid of that. Let me get the plug out of the way. Take off the coil lead because it's just in the way. Just get that out of the way down there. So I've got to take this positive terminal off as well, guys. We'll do that right now. All right, guys, a couple of rags over the bonnet so I don't shred my arms. I'm going to start off with the top bolt and get it loosened up nice. Not taking it out, just loosen it off. Leave plenty of thread. And you guys can see exactly where that bottom bolt is. 
and it's in a good spot, isn't it? So let's get it out. Okay, it's just loose lot the top one. This is the adjustment bolt down there. It's 12 mil as well. Now we can loosen it off and then take the bottom bolt out. All right, she just cracked. So what I'm gonna do is now take the bottom bolt all the way out. The bottom bolt's out, you can see it's very, very loose. Everything's loose. You get these belts off. Okay, and probably leave them just sitting there rather than take them right out and get fiddled up with all that fan. Okay, so now we can get the top bolt right out. It's already pretty loose. So the watch is open, I'm gonna drop on that one. Or just hanging there. Probably enough so we can get that out. Now she's a pretty awkward thing to get in and out, ladies and gents. I've got to come over here to the other side of the vehicle and get this bolt out the top. It's real loose now. Look, it's awkward. You don't even get your hand in under that. You know what I'm saying? And you've got to get around that side and twist up. So you can see she's loose. Okay, so I'm going to pull that top bolt out and then thread it through this gap. Okay, here it is. Boys and girls, like I said, everything's still in the way. It's a very awkward thing. Now it looks pretty clean guys, because I did sort of dress it up a little bit last week. There it is, we got it out. Okay, ladies and gents, it was a bit awkward, but I got it in the same way. We got the top bolt in. Just trying to start the thread while it's loose. That way, once it's started, we're sweet. Yeah, it's started. She's in. Okay, so now all we got to do, there it is still loose, is get the bottom one in. And then we do the belt second. And the belts will be tight, but it's best to get the bottom one in first and do the belt last. That Otherwise, you'll never get the bottom bolt in if it doesn't fit properly. So this goes through a slider here into the alternator. Now ideally I'm not going to be able to do it up with my hand so I'm going to put a socket on and then try because it give a bit of leverage in there. It's very awkward. We can't see him leaning over a bull bar. So what we do is we start it off. It's, oh my god, it's Okay, it's there. Might be able to get it. Might be able to, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like it's sort of. Might not need the socket if I can get my hand on it. Get it started. There's a bit of WD-40 on the thread. Okay, it's slippery, so use the socket. Just get it started. Make sure it's going in there. Okay. That block, the stud that goes through, goes through the bottom of the alternator. You can see there, I've got to nip it up. So we've got it started real good. The top bolt's in. We'll put the belts on now, and then we can adjust it and do it all up nicely. Okay, we've got this one, so we've got to get it over the other slot now. The problem is I'm working on my tiptoes, ladies and gents. Last time I did this, I stood on a step ladder. So it'll go on, lucky we've got a clutch fan, right? Now there's the second one, in the back, on the back pulley, make sure it's on the back pulley underneath. She's on the back pulley, on the alternator. Okay, next belt. It's not hard, there we go. Getting there. Okay, so now nipping it up by hand, guys. Just nip it up. I don't want to over tighten it, it's pretty good. Alright, so now we're going to nip up that bottom bolt. I already hit it with the air, just to check it. It's tight with by hand. I'm not stripping nothing down there today. Alright, so now it's the top bolt, ladies and gents. There we go. Nice, there we go, guys. Alternator is in. Alright, ladies and gents, she's in. So now we do our plug. Everything's still disconnected, right? Because we need to do the plug and we don't want to mess with any power. Okay, there's the plug. Plugs are uh, knackered, so yeah, we just put a new one on. 
got the new plug just over there so that will cut this off re-solder a new one on somewhere here and uh let's get the job done this tool is very handy ladies and gents just strips it off nice like that probably about that one would be best okay perfect so we can thread the other one on Okay, ladies and gents, here's our new fusible link. As you can see, one terminal's bigger than the other. So we've got a 12 mil one and a 10 mil one just there. And the plug, obviously, then you can't go wrong. So that's how you can't go wrong because there's a big and a small in there. There's a 12 mil and a 10 mil in there. So we just got to get those off. We've unplugged the plug, get rid of the old one, swap it over, do up the terminal, put our reservoir back on there, which sits over there. And we should be right to go. All the wiring's done. The new alternator's in. Everything's ready to go. Just swap this over and uh, let's hope for the best. Like, by no means, guys, I'm not an electrician and I'm not a mechanic, but I do most of the things on this car myself and have been for 16 odd years. All right, ladies and gents. There's the old one. The new one's in. We've done it all up. Nothing's popped. <laughs> Everything's ready to go. All we're going to do is put this reservoir back onto this part here, that, and uh, put the tyre back on, lift the car back up, turn it over, and uh, there we go. We'll check it all out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you see, it didn't start. So I've just come back to double check everything, like there's nothing's wrong here. This lead that I took off earlier, I didn't put it back on. I tucked it in behind over down there and totally forgot about connecting the lead. So let's go and try it again, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll try it again now. Whew. All right, she starts, it's gonna run like a bag because we've disconnected the battery. And the computer has to reset. Good thing is though, ladies and gentlemen, you can hear there's no cat whine. It's not going rare anymore because these cob belts aren't on there anymore, okay? So, everything's nice and quiet now. Uh, and we're gonna get this out. I'm gonna pack up some tools, let this idle for a bit and take it for a run. So, it'll reset the computer after you know a good run it'll take a bit of time i don't know what that noise is ladies and gents could be yeah, steering now a good sign ladies and gents that the dash lights are not on all right so we've we've, we've got this thing working again all right, ladies and gents, that brings this one to an end. Like I said at the start, by no means am I a qualified mechanic or electrician. So if you are going to follow these steps, it's all with your own risk. So yeah, look, all the best. And if you can't do the job, definitely get someone that can help you or send it to the shop. Once again, guys, appreciate you watching it. Chuck that thumbs up, hit that subscription button. Let's get the car ready. Let's get in the bush and we'll see you in the next one.